K-I-L-R Killer Games I'm the Killer Gamer! And I'm Nerdy Gamer 2K! And this is. River Raid! Oh! So, what is it? A raid of rivers. Um, not exactly. <laughs> Although you might have a river raid that looks like that, I don't know. Uh, that is River Raid uh, for the Atari 2600. Yeah, it was designed and developed by Carol Shaw for the uh, 2600 in 1982, published by Activision, in case you couldn't see that on the cartridge box. Didn't Pac-Man knew Activision? Oh, no. Activision would never hear the end of it if they did Pac-Man. Matter of fact, if they had done Pac-Man, it probably would have been done right. Uh, anyway, there was over one million game cartridges sold for River Raid. River Raid was a pretty popular game. River Raid was then later ported to the Atari 5200. Um, I had that version. It pretty much looked exactly the same. Uh, ColecoVision, the Intellivision, the Commodore 64, the Atari 8-bit computer, and the Spectrum, and Windows which uh, was included in Activision's Atari 2600 Action Pack and Microsoft's Game Room. Uh, and I, it's been released for, uh, you name it, like PlayStation 2 on those Action Packs of where they put all these Activision games on. Thing. But, uh, anywho, uh, River Raid was a miracle in gaming. Why, you ask? Well, there is an unending amount of terrain in the game. It scrolls uh, from top to bottom, but it's endless. Uh, which is beyond the computer limits of, of the uh, devices at the time, especially the Atari 2600. I mean, it's not like it had tons of memory to really do much with. But they accomplished this using procedural generation algorithms to generate the same game world every time. Um, I guess it's kind of like Minecraft. It just randomly generates the world. Um, or if you go to, uh, let's say, Pandora, <laughs> and you decide to pick a song, and it uses procedural generation algorithms... To pick other songs that it thinks you might like. But you don't. Uh, but unlike uh, unlike that, River Raid actually gives you a better uh, uh, product in the end, I think. Uh, so you're wondering, hmm, how do you play this game? All right, well, let's go over that. Uh, let's go over the plan of operation. Uh, your mission is to score as many points as possible by destroying... Enemy tankers, helicopters, few depots, or depots. Uh, depends on how you want to say it. Jets and bridges before your jet crashes or runs out of fuel. Here's how to begin. Hook up your video game system. Wow. <laughs> Which means someone at some time thought, oh, let me just plug this in, I don't know, my VCR <laughs> and see if it works. Um but then you got people who probably didn't hook their video game system right. So that's why it says follow the manufacturer's instructions. Um, they also didn't want to get sued because you know how people like to sue others because they uh, they screw up themselves and don't want to take uh, responsibility for their actions. But I, I digress. I move on. With the power off, plug in the game cartridge. Uh, that part's actually important. Some people just think, oh, let me just plug the game in. Yeah, that that's no good. Uh, it's not like no a bueno. US, it's not like a USB port. <laughs> you can't just plug it and unplug it. All right, switch it off <laughs> and then plug the game cartridge. 
uh, then you want to turn the power on. That's the big important part, because if you don't turn the power on... It won't work. It's not going to work. Um, if you don't pay your electric bill, probably, I'm not sure, but probably it's not going to work. Just making an assumption there. Uh, if no picture appears, then you might want to check the connection of your game system to your TV. If that don't work, then you just need to start over <laughs> with 1, 2, and 3. And if you're still having problems, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, <laughs> maybe go to step 4, I don't know. Plug in your joystick controller or controllers. The solar player, not solar as in sun, but solo, like Han Solo, uh, player will use the left joystick. Uh, and if you're Han Solo, you will use the, I guess you'll use both of them, just because Han Solo's cool, come on. Uh, set both difficulty switches to B to begin with. If you don't know who Han Solo is... Get out of here. Get, get out. <laughs> That's all I gotta say, get out. All right, uh, step six, you're gonna select the game with the game select switch. Game one is one player. Game two is two players taking turns. Well, that's kind of hard to remember. All right, so use of the joystick controller. Make sure you hold the joystick controller with the red button in the upper left position. Um, if you are left-handed, well, we can't accommodate you. I don't know. Just Turn it around right or something. Handed. Figure it out. Uh, you're going to fire missiles by depressing the red button. You'll hold the red button down for a continuous fire. You'll move the joystick to the left, the bank left. Move the joystick to the right, the bank right. Move your joystick forward to accelerate and pull your joystick back to slow your jet. Uh, unless you have an emulator for your computer, then you can kind of mess that up and uh, put those directions every which way. You know, press back uh, and or pull back in order for it to fire. Uh, press forward to make it to go left. Um, could be some fun uh, party tricks. Um, might want to think about that. Uh, just don't tell them I told you. <laughs> uh, let's see. So you're going to begin or start a new game. You'll press game reset, and this will bring your jet up to the starter mark. Uh, sounds like a race. Then press the red button or move the joystick to start the action. Uh, with the difficulty switches in the A position, missiles will streak straight ahead. With the switches in the B position, you can control the direction of your missiles after... They have been fired by steering them with your joystick controller. Reinforcements. Just in case you need to have a whole squadron behind you. <laughs> no, that doesn't really happen. You begin each game with a squadron of three jets in reserve. And for each 10,000 points you score, you're given an additional jet. You can only have nine reserve jets on the screen at one time. In real life, that 10,000 points uh, relates to $10,000. Could be 10,000 million dollars i don't know all right so fuel you have a limited amount of fuel when you begin to run low fly over a fuel depot or a depot to refuel see fuel gauge under special features for scoring each time you destroy an enemy object you score points well, that's good <laughs> extra points Points are good, although modern games nowadays, you don't get points. Uh, you get maybe pointers as far as shooting stuff in order to advance in the game. But yeah, so the point values for each object are listed right below there. They all look like that. Tanker, 30 points. Helicopter, 60. Few, depot, 80. A jet, 100. And a bridge, 500. And in the little picture there, that kind of shows you whereabouts they all are including the fuel gauge number of reserve jets uh your score uh and then we got special features of river raid by Activision. the river of no return the river is divided into sections with a bridge at the end of each section notice that the river is always changing it's that procedural algorithm thing you would uh, encounter islands, narrow channels, bays, and lots of enemy ships and aircraft moving to block your path. Also, the farther down the river you fly, the fewer fuel depots you'll find. In some areas, fuel is quite scarce. 
so you'll really have to move if you want to survive. Remember, it's a race. Uh, actually, not a race. Uh, it's anyway, not. <laughs> it's it's a race, not. Uh, fuel gauge. Always keep an eye and an ear on your fuel gauge. Fuel is used up at a constant rate regardless of your speed, unlike real life. When your fuel drops below a quarter full, in case you're wondering what one slash four means, it's a fraction. It means one fourth. It means one fourth of a quarter. Of a quarter. A dollar. Well, one fourth of a, a whole. Of a dollar. Or a dollar. Or a slice of, or a, a whole pizza. Or a slice of pizza. Or a few depot. Or bridge. <laughs> quarter of a bridge. Anyway, a warning siren sounds alert. Sounds to alert you. It's time to refuel. The slower you fly over a depot, the more fuel you receive. A bell with a sound while well, you are ref well, it'll it'll have a sound and it will sound while you are <laughs> refueling. And this sound changes to a higher pitch when your fuel tank is full. Ding ding ding. All right, losing a jet. You lose a jet when it collides with the river bank. I can't imagine why, you know, I thought maybe it could just land it on the riverbank. Or one of the enemy objects, except for a few depots. Um, again, you know, if you collide with something, I wouldn't expect that you would lose a jet. But, you know, I'm glad they kind of pointed this out here. Uh, or if you run out of fuel. I guess it doesn't fly. It doesn't. <laughs> If you have a reserve jet left, you restart play at the same section of the river where you crashed. However, if you've managed to destroy the bridge at the end of that section, then you get to restart play at the beginning of the next section. Glad you don't have to start the game over like some games because that would just suck. It certainly does suck. All right, so how do you get the feel of River Raid? By Activision! But to you... learn to fly successful missions, you'll need the sensitivity, the touch, and the sharp shooting skills of a precision jet pilot. But that takes time and practice. Not gonna happen today. At first, try jetting down the river at slow speed. Practice banking your plane, sharpening your aim, and dodging the enemy. To win in this game, You'll have to be just as good at dodging as you are at destroying enemy bridges and aircraft. Then, accelerate your jet with burst of speed to see how it reacts to the controls. Since you'll be making split-second decisions, you'll need to know exactly how you and your plane will act in a pressure situation. Or a pressure cooker. <laughs> All right, so how to join the Activision River Raiders? This is important. If you reach a score of 1,500 points or more, you are eligible to become an official River Raider. Simply send us a picture of your TV screen showing your score along with your name and address, and we'll send you an official River Raider, Raider album. Album. Yeah, we got an album and an emblem. We'll send them <laughs> both to you. <laughs> score the maximum of 1 million and all points on the screen will be replaced with exclamation points remember 1 million is the key 1 million if you ever do manage to score the ultimate please send us a photo and don't photoshop it <laughs> such an achievement will certainly rank you as one of the world's greatest video game competitors all right. Well, I'm not sending you any type of emblem, but here you go. You can go ahead and, you know, take a screenshot of that, put it in paint, uh, Photoshop, whatever you want to do, and print it out and... Uh, Have fun. Uh, stick it to your arm or chest or... Your forehead. Whatever. Your forehead, yeah. <laughs> Back of your head, yeah. That works. But um, uh, how do you become a River Raider? Uh, tips from Carol Shaw, the designer of River Raid. That's her. Smiling. Beep. Wonder what she do what she's doing nowadays. Kara Shaw is one of Activision's newest, well, not new anymore, game designers, <laughs> but but isn't a newcomer to video game design. She's also a scholar in the field of computer science. The River of No Return 
think there's a movie called that. I don't know. Sounds like a good title for something. It would be. Holds many special challenges and dangers for Whitby River Raiders. And you'll not only have to know your assault jet, but you'll need to have a good idea of your basic flight plan before you start. Make sure you plan this. By knowing the river and being the river, pinpointing areas, <laughs> you got to make love to the river. <laughs> he wants to make love to the mountain. Ah, uh, William Shatner. Um, pinpointing areas with the highest concentration of enemy and the most fuel depots, you will have a much better chance of surviving. Since the river is in sections, try jotting down notes for each important section as flight aids. Fuel is also a critical factor. When you're far up the river, fuel is scarce. So concentrate on flying to the next fuel depot and don't try to destroy every object. That's just impossible. <laughs> Especially when they're on two different sides of an island. Yeah. Um, anyway, when you become really skilled, you'll find you can actually blow up a fuel depot right in the middle of your fueling. That way you can gain the points and some fuel at the same time. Finally, remember that your main targets are the bridges. They're worth the most points. And please drop me a note and let me know how you're doing. I'd really like to hear from you. <laughs> but I'm not giving you my address. But you can send it to Act or uh, you can send it to me, care of Activision uh, Incorporated, drawer number seven two eight seven. We stick your stuff in a drawer in someone's desk. Uh, at Mountain View, California, 94042. Uh, in 1982. Don't know if they're still around. At that address. Probably not. Anyway, make sure you look for Activision Video Games wherever you buy video game cartridges. Drop us a note and we'll gladly add your name to our mailing list. And keep you posted on new Activision game cartridges as they become available. Buy now. <laughs> Uh, all right, you, you had enough about me speaking? I'm sure you have. All right, so let's go ahead and get on with this uh, awesome classic game for the Atari 2600. Uh, we're going to raid some rivers and play River Raid. All right, time for some River Raid. Where's my controller? Right there. Oh, okay. In front of like you. looking for it and stuff. Uh, all right. What do we do here? We want to select two players. There we go. So I, think I would that's use mine. Players. Yeah, you'll be able to use yours. Yay! Yay cool. Copyright 90, 1982 by Activision. All right. Remember, you only got one fire button. <laughs> it's not very complicated. Oh, well, it might be complicated for some. Oh yeah, we can press press fire to start. Uh, maybe not. We'll do this. Ah, okay. We got to start it, start it, and then we can start it to move. Oh, I get how you can accidentally shoot it. Yeah, so push back. That makes it slow. And you, when you fuel up, you definitely want to um, go slow so you can get the most out of your fuel like this. Except I shot that thing. Oh, I get it. So if you're on it and shoot, it shoots it? Ah! I have to... That should have sped up. Yep, that'd be you. You're the black plane. I want to be the black... Oh, that was... <laughs> that was great. Look, it's 1980! <laughs> awesome! It's 1980! What? Look! The score! Oh! Ah! How awesome is that? That's hilarious. That is. That's that's just cool. How often are you going to see that on an 80s game? I was confused when you were saying that. It's fate, man. Totally. I missed him. Now remember, if we do well with our flying... We'll be all prepared for the real thing. Nope. 
I mean, according to the developer, really important to shoot that bridge, otherwise you're going to be back at the beginning again. Ah! Well, see, I ran into the very first thing I saw. So, you know. That's why it takes practice. It just moves so fast. It does. But that's the, uh... That's the... The fun of it. No, it's not. It keeps well, you on your feet. I think it's time to get some fuel. What feet? Arr, get the plane! Let us the plane! The plane! Whoops. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> plane! Ah! <laughs> so close. 90! As in 1990! Um, I don't know. That was a thought. Eh. It's... Look at it! And you know what? When you fly one of these uh, jets in the 1980s, it sounds just like that. It goes... Pew, pew, pew. Why is it so jiggly? Ah! Well, at least you got the bridge. It That's wasn't it. smooth. What do you mean it wasn't It wasn't smooth. moving smoothly. It was jiggity. Getting jiggity with it? <laughs> <laughs> like, move yours. See how it's all, like... Smooth. Got that plane. But, I better get some fuel. Tricky, tricky, tricky! Alright. So if you run into a bridge, you start from the very, 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 very beginning? No, no, no. Just the beginning of that particular level. Isn't that when you die? Also? Yeah. So anyway, if you... You start over on, you know, whatever particular section that you're in... Unless you get that bridge, and then you're on the next one. So if I hadn't got that bridge, I'd have to start over again. Oh! That plane. <laughs> <laughs> Must have been a magnet. It's like, See, look. <laughs> so jiggy. Jiggity. Boom. How many planes? Oh, this is my last plane. This is a fun game, though. <laughs> Until you crash! So fun. <laughs> it's like, this is a fun game, crash! <laughs> I See, spoke too soon. Not Boom. smoothly. <laughs> oh, wow. Alright. 1580. 1580. Oh. Oh. What? Should we do another one or no? Oh. Yeah, let's do another one. Why not? This is so hard. See, in this game, it doesn't matter how far you go, go, it's how many points you get. So just shoot everything! But she said not, not to shoot, to shoot everything. Oh, you know what? I just realized something. Let's try one of the other uh, options, because there's that one where when you move, the uh, the missile goes with it. Oh. Where's the difficulty switch? That was not it. <laughs> uh, let's see. Okay. I think we have it set up here. It doesn't seem like it. <laughs> Oh, well. It is moving with it. Is it kind of moving? Yeah, because see, it moves with your plane. Oh, okay. Yeah, it is moving. That just seems more difficult. But yeah, but you can guide it. See? If you're a good guider. 
Well, it's at least a little something different. At least we can kind of show our... Uh-oh. And that's what it sounds like when you're almost out of fuel. So that noise. See that? You can shoot the fuel thing while you're on it. You almost shot it. So you get the fuel and you get the points. I don't remember two planes before. Maybe there was. No. It's because it's different. Hello. Ooh, look at that. I got the jet. That means I'm an awesome jet fighter. Uh, no, <laughs> Mike. <laughs> you know what? I just need to shut up. <laughs> Maybe just go around. Now ah, I suck. I'm not. I'm a sucky jet fighter. I'll probably get really far or something. But now that you just said, or I'll that just you mess are. up my morale. Boom. I shot it. Did you? Looked like you did a suicide run. I did both. Hey, I completely missed that. <laughs> Yell. It's that same spot. I, wasn't, I thought that was the same spot. It's the same airplane, too! Go on the right side. That Better be careful here! <laughs> well, at least I got the bridge! <laughs> That doesn't mean anything. Nope. <laughs> wow, we're doing an awesome job. I'll make an excellent pilot. But see, we're not lying when we sit, we get owned. Yep, yeah, see, I just <laughs> spoke to... <laughs> Stop. All right. Awesome. Well, let's see. We'll just let this thing run here as we're um, oh, yeah. yawning. Kind of ending our little video here. Just to say uh, we appreciate you taking a look at this. And you know what? We make a whole bunch of other videos, uh, which you can click on there on the screen. Some uh, other Atari uh, videos you can check out that we've done on the classic Atari 2600. I should run out of fuel just so, just so we can see what it looks like. So, yeah. We appreciate you watching. Give us a like. Share it with your friends. Boom. So Splash. close. <laughs> and, uh, check out our other videos. Tell us what you think. Uh, make some comments down below. You can, you can say how much we just suck and get owned whoa um or hey you know what you can make some suggestions on some games to play uh we do modern ones we do old ones online we're just we're just kind of like that so but anyway we appreciate you thanks for checking it out and we'll see you on the next game and get, uh, yeah, get pawned. Pawned. Or owned. Whatever you want to call it.